Hello there. You're looking at the interface of a wonderful 3D program called Moment of Inspiration. My name is Tom Meeks and I'm interested in 3D printing. If you're going to be interested in 3D printing, you need to be interested in finding a really good 3D design product. And I think Moment of Inspiration is a wonderful product for doing this. I'm going to start a series of tutorials in the, at the introductory level. How do you get started at Moment of Inspiration? This should be useful to those who have downloaded the trial and those who are using Moment of Inspiration for the first time. I've been using Moment of Inspiration for about eight months, and while that doesn't make me an expert, it does allow me to help somebody come in and use this for the first time. So let's get started. And the first place I want to get started is down here with this Options button. It's really important to set up your environment the way you want it set up. And so we're going to show you how to do that. While there are a number of tabs on, on, that we can change on this options dialog, we're only going to be looking at general and grid. The first thing we're going to be looking at is making sure that we pick a unit of measure. And in my case, I'm going to pick millimeters. Even though I'm in the United States and usually use inches, I find millimeters to be more useful to me when I'm printing with a 3D printer. My decimal display, I'll leave at zero, and my language is, is obviously English. Now I'm going to go to the grid. The grid is going to help us see things on the screen a little better as I make these tutorials. And while the, the setup that we see here is fine. Usually, I want to make it a little darker for my tutorials. And I actually generally like to work a little darker. Instead of moving from, from top to bottom, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to change my grid lines to make them a little darker. I click on this to get a nice even number. And I'm going to come up to about 154 or so, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't have to be precise. I'm just going to make it a little darker than what it was. Now you see that our lines have changed, but I need to be able to see my accented grid lines. So I'm going to go here and make sure that that's somewhere around the same amount, 148. Yeah, good. Now we can see our accented lines. It's important to know that if these colors are anywhere nearly alike, you'll need to differentiate the style. In this case, if I change this to solid, you notice that the lines all seem to run together. But if I turn it back to dot, you can see these groupings. Now, these groupings are important. The accented lines every five lines. I like to work in a little different area. Here we have five lines, one, two, three, four, five. And so right here we have a box or a group of five grid lines. Let's make that a little bit bigger to 10. The reason for that is that it allows me to make sure that in a more visually, instantly visually available sense that I'm going to fit on my 3D printer when I'm designing something. I like to see groups of 10. Here we have groups of 10 lines. The one thing that we have lost, however, I'll move this over, is that we have lost our orientation lines. Those are equally important. So I'm going to change the x-axis color. Now that we've made these darker, we need to make these much darker. Click on my x-axis line. And this time I'm going to go down. And we'll make it 191. That works. Oh, here it is. There's our x-axis line. And now we're going to change our y-axis line. Go darker. That's good enough. Now, we now have an x-axis going left and right, a y-axis going up and down. However, you see that the x-axis stops at this point, as does the y-axis. This point is called the origin. That is where zero, uh, x equals 0 and y equals 0. The x-axis continues on, but from here on, it'll be negative numbers. Let's move this over a little bit. If we move in this direction, that'll be negative. If we move in this direction, it's positive. Same with the y. Moving up from the point of origin, which is 0y, as we go up, we're in positive numbers. As we go down, we are in negative numbers. And now I'm going to just say close. 
Here we have our quadrants. Now we can discuss our quadrants a little more easily. We have a top view. The top view is like looking down on the bed of your 3D printer. Then in the lower left, we have the front view. If we drop down in front of the 3D printer and look head on to it, this is the view we would see. Over here, we have the right view. The right view would be moving around to the right of the 3D printer, down at the bed level, and this is what you would see. And then finally, we have a 3D view, and this 3D view allows us to move around freely to see anything we want to see. Now, we don't, aren't limited to only looking at this split view. Notice on the bottom we have split, or we can select any one of these views. I'm going to select the 3D view, and notice now that we have the full 3D view. We can uh, pan left and right. We can zoom in and out. Now, I'm moving my mouse up and down or rolling the wheel to move in and out. There's rolling the wheel. I can select a specific area, okay? And then it'll zoom in on that. And I can reset it. Resetting it gets it back to the orientation, the default orientation. If I have any objects selected, it will reset and focus on those objects, which is kind of cool. Then we can go to the top view. And now I want to show you something else. I can click this button, and now I'm in a bottom view. Notice the Y axis when I, I'm on top, bottom. Now the positive numbers are going down because I'm looking from the bottom of the bed. I can go to the front view. Click on that, and it becomes the back view. So it tells us right up here what view we're at. And I click again, it goes to the front. So it toggles back and forth. Same with right, left, right. So these are our, our views can be changed, and we can focus in on various things. In the right-hand side of the screen, the only thing we're going to focus on for right now is this, uh, this box up here. And these tools right in this area. This toolbar, okay, has a number of tools. Normally, if you have a large screen, you can have these all open at one time, but because I'm squished down, it's kind of compressed. If I click on edit, this will open and this will close. Now, as part of my um, setting up my options, I can choose where this is from left to right. We didn't do that, but we can. What's important is I'm going to select one of these objects and show you what this area is for. Click on this circle, and it gives me some directions. It allows me some options, and it allows me to cancel and get out. It says pick a center point. Well, notice I'm, I'm on the X now over here, and you can see it in all four quadrants. I'm on the Y. You can see it in all, uh, all four quadrants. If I click down here to the origin, notice all of the views show me at the origin. Now, I resize by either moving my mouse or, what's really cool, I can type in a number. Now, I've got diameter set. Look at the right-hand side where it said pick diameter. I've got that diameter set. I'm not going to move my mouse. I'm just going to type in 10, a diameter of 10. Now, that's kind of cool because... And let me undo that, and we'll show you that again. All right, click this. It says pick a center point. I did that. Now, this time, however, I'm going to click on the word diameter over here, and I'm going to make that a radius. So I can toggle back and forth. And you can do this freely while you're designing. Toggle back and forth. I'm going to say a radius of 20. Very precise. Now I have a radius of 20. And you'll notice now, oh, let me, let me watch, watch this when I hit reset. And I hit reset. Notice that it takes these objects and resets them so that I can get a good view. I did that all the way around. But most important thing we're going to show you, and the last thing we're going to show you in this tutorial, is be sure to name your object. I'm going to click on this object. It's unnamed. I'm going to say circle 01. Okay? Now, it turns up that it now goes into this object browser, and I can turn it off and on, visible, off and on. Sometimes you want things in your design to be invisible so that it's not 
sent out to the 3D printer, but you still need it. And also I can select, whether it's visible or not, I can select an object. And sometimes objects will be inside other objects and you can't see them. If it's not named, you're never going to get to them unless you turn off that object or make the other object invisible. Here you can select that object. So naming your objects is very important. Well, I hope this has been helpful up to this point. And we're going to be going further in the next step, but I don't want to go too long in these tutorials. We've already gone long enough. Hope this is useful and look forward to seeing you next time.